Yeah, hi, I'm uh, Andrew Hammond, uh, currently Managing Director of New Zealand Lester Fuels. I've been in New Zealand for about 17 years, originally from South Africa. <laughs> um, technically, I've got a master's degree in chemical engineering, an honours degree in operations research. Uh, enjoy all things technical and scientific and what have you. Got into the biodiesel industry from the point of view of interest in renewables and had a, a set of uh, colleagues and friends who had shared a, a common mindset and we put together our resources, both financial and intellectual, some three to four years ago and constructed this facility. What was, what was happening with all this raw product before you came along? It was uh, being exported overseas to make cosmetics and soaps, yeah, and then imported back into New Zealand as high value products. So we're exporting low value raw materials, um, whereas we could be creating, you know, converting them here, creating employment, creating a tax base, providing some degree of fuel security, um, and also, you know, doing our bit towards, you know, Kyoto Protocol obligations. Any, uh, any oil or fats is uh, chemically known as a triglyceride, and it's a pretty simple molecule contains a glycerol backbone and uh, three fatty acids, hence the name triglyceride. And what we do here is uh, reduce the viscosity of the oil to that of a biodiesel, which is uh, some 40 times less in terms of viscosity. We do that by adding a, uh, a methanol molecule to the, uh, to the oil and react that. And that strips off the, uh, the fatty acid and combines to make a um, to make a methyl ester, which is the, the biodiesel. And then you're left with a, a glycerol phase. So you can see that very same thing occurring over here. We've reacted oils with uh, some methanol, and you have the biodiesel phase on the top, which is this, the green and the little red jobs. And below is a, a quite a thick and viscous glycerol phase. Now that reaction takes about two hours to occur. Um, the whole process through our facility takes about 150 hours. So we spend a lot of time cleaning up the oils and once the reaction's done we spend a lot of time cleaning up the biodiesel till eventually you end up with a, a product that looks very similar to that so it's, a, it's got to have a nice clear and bright colour and that could be used for a, a transport fuel just as is or you can blend it down with, uh, with diesel if required. Well we collect used coconut oil from some 450 outlets uh, all around the central North Island all the way from Taniata, Whakatane, um, Hamilton, Raglan, all the way up to Helensville. We've got one guy on the road. Hi, I'm Paddy. I work for NZEF, which is a um, use cooking oil recycling, or we recycle it into biodiesel. And what do you do? My job is to collect the waste cooking oil, which we turn into the biodiesel, and then also deliver the biodiesel and um, general dog's body, I would guess, with everything else. Feed the skipper too. <laughs> G'day, I'm Lynn from Cafe George in Tuakau. Um, we use canola oil in our deep fryers. They're emptied once a week, if not twice. We go through at least 20 kgs a week. And we have a gentleman that comes in and empties it for us and takes it away. Most of them probably don't think about it. It's just a commercial thing and they just want it out of their back of their restaurants as fast as they can, I guess. But um, there's, there's quite a few around now that are becoming more and more aware of you know, our sustainability problems and stuff like that. And once they uh, realise where it's going to, it's going into a local industry, being used again. Yeah, they're very receptive about that. We bring in our oil and um, pop it in these barrels. And when they're more or less full, they are picked up and taken away clean as, and a new clean barrel is left here for us. What used to happen with this stuff? Um, they just used to throw it in, a, in the uh, rubbish bin out the back and it used to go out with everything else. Well, we just simply uh, bring in the used coconuts from a um, range of fish and chip shops and we'd obviously purify that oil to strip out debris and water and things like that. And then we add a, a methanol mixture to it. The methanol reacts with the oils and splits off the glycerol phase and generates a, a biodiesel phase on the top, which we then purify further to strip out residual soaps and excess methanols and what have you. 
and produce a, a, a final um, clarified product which is nice and clear and bright, which could be used directly in the diesel engine. So it's just effectively a one-step chemical conversion. It's fundamentally, it is simple. Yeah, and that can be used as is in, in any conventional diesel engine. What's good for chips um, is good for uh, biodiesel. The degradation products that are as part of the frying process are bad for the human body, but also bad for, for biofuel. And those same um, type of contaminants can create issues in, in, a, in a car's engine. What I'm doing from here is just transferring oil that was collected from Sky City and other restaurants in town, bringing it back to the plant and transferring it into these IBCs for uh, further processing. <laughs> it's a grubby job, but my truck will never rust. <laughs> I've cut bits and pieces out of it, but it's usually pretty good now. But on the road's good, meet heaps of interesting people. I can tell you where to eat and not eat. <laughs> Well, the, the drums themselves uh, can contain all kinds of unusual debris, um, you know, the usual fish and chip bits and stuff, but I found the odd possum or two, <laughs> and uh, beer handles and knives and forks and rubber gloves, and I found bricks the other day. That was unbelievable. I found six bricks in the bottom of this drum. This is a drum of fats, and uh, oh, this is not too bad. This is kind of a Chef A Palmoline product. This is very good quality fats, so this would have been cooking chips um, a little while ago. So it's not, it doesn't have much debris, it's not badly, it's not dark in colour. Um, yeah, so this will make very good, good biofuel. What's it like handling these things all day long? Oh yeah, I guess you get used to it, you know, you just make sure you have a shower every time before you go and see a lovely lady, you know. Good for the skin? Oh, it's great, it keeps our hands baby soft, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, uh, we'd also bring in oils. I think this is a drum of oil. So let's have a look at what this one looks like. Sometimes it's a bit of a... Oh, this is a, some, something disgusting, you know? Yeah, this is a, a shop owner uh, decided to put it in black plastic bags. So we've got a bit of a mess here, you know? So we'd have to... Oh, God. Yeah, no, this is like crap, you know? So... We do our best to extract as much of the oil out of there, but I mean, that's the kind of residue you'd get, you know? Yeah, this is, um, this is not too bad either. This is a kind of a tallow. See, it's much harder. But that would, that would again, produce a very good biofuel, you know? One of the advantages is, well, one of the things about making biofuel is that the, the resultant biofuel inherits the properties of the mother oil. So in winter time, you probably couldn't run 100% of this fuel because it'd, it'd gel or go solid in your engine. Uh, but it's, it's got a very high c number, so it's a nice, chunky, powerful fuel. So we tend to run this uh, in summertime and make blends rich in, in uh, the fats and what have you, you know, because it makes a great, a great fuel. Hey, tell me, so like for one of these barrels of fat, how much fuel do I get? Uh, it's, it's more or less a one-to-one -one ratio. You know, we probably get a, a 90 to 95% uh, yield. Um, you know, one litre of oil would roughly make one litre of biofuel. Um, you add, you know, stoichiometrically add about 10% methanol and you generate about 10% glycerol. Yeah, you know, the one other source we have and it's a, is uh, we collect the chicken cooking residue from uh, some of the local pack and save delicatessens. After they cook the chickens, the, uh, the fat and, and what have you gets collected. And the, this currently goes to landfill. Um, and those fats are not very good. And uh, so we found that the engagement with the likes of uh, New World and uh, Pack and Save to be uh, somewhat progressive, if you excuse the pun. Yeah, so it makes a, there's a very good oil in there, and that makes excellent biofuel because it's relatively pure, it's not degraded. Um, and about 50% of the, of the balance of this material is the jelly meat, and of course, bits of chicken and what have you, you know. But uh, the jelly meat uh, is a high protein source, so we just got to find a something to do with that. But you could put it to a local render or something, you know. But yeah, I mean, we, we stockpile the residue from our from the from the process, 
and it's taken time but we've developed uh, viable markets for that and it, it's used uh, in quite a few industries in uh, New Zealand um, again replacing uh, imports and also you know you um, feel like you're doing something for the environment this stuff here I think a way back would have been just dumped into landfills and and what have you but we're finding a use for it and keeping the planet green as everyone says you know Really? <laughs> oh, Got to leave something green for your kids, don't you? Well, we hope. We collect the uh, the oils into a big vat that's heated, and we let it settle here and uh, take out all the debris and the water components to make it as uh, as clear as possible. You know, and this is getting very close to. Uh, to adding the methanol to convert into biofuel. We then pump the oils around the building into this uh, reactor over here. Yeah, so, well, this is a, a thousand litre reactor, so we'd bring in uh, the oils from the filtration stage. We put it through a flow meter, a control valve into the reaction system, um, so we know exactly how much we're putting in. And then the methoxide from the far corner gets metered in at the bottom, uh, according to our recipes that we're running at the time. We have these recipes, we'd add a certain amount of methanol, and then we would add a, uh, a caustic catalyst, in this case we're using potassium hydroxide. We mix that together with the, uh, the methanol, and uh, that makes the, uh, the core reaction uh, catalyst for addition to the oils. So after we've uh, reacted the oils with, uh, with methanol, we drop it into these setting lines and the glycerol is allowed to separate from the biodiesel. We re separately recover the, uh, the glycerol phase into this black tank over here and we strip that methanol off later. But the, uh, the biodiesel would move through this methanol recovery unit. Pretty simple device that we designed. It's a vacuum chamber uh, with the heating, um, heating elements or hot water heaters and it uh, strips off the methanol, which we subsequently recycle and reuse. So it goes on a, on a loop. Uh, and that way it can help. Well, yeah, you don't want methanol floating around, but also you can keep your cost down, you know? So uh, after the uh, biodiesel has been dry washed using Magnesol, we put it into this uh, final storage tank, and from there it gets dispatched to customers, either in drums or in thousand liter IBCs. And what kind of things do they use it for? Well, any, any diesel engine, um, in a, in a truck, in a car, in a boat, uh, back end of an air compressor or a diesel generator. Uh, burners can run it. So anything they would use diesel can use biodiesel. So where are we off to? We're off to uh, Mangatapri Silos. They're a, um, a company that um, make uh, animal stock food, pelletize them, or they use a uh, a boiler to, in their process. Boiler runs on our biodiesel. About between a 30 and a 40 percent biodiesel blend, and they also run a slightly lower blend with some of their trucks. What's it like as a fuel? Beautiful. You end up having cats and dogs chasing you all over the place. You make everyone hungry that's following behind you. It just smells like fish and chips. <laughs> But What's it's like on engine? Engine, it's, there's about 80% less emissions, particulate emissions, and the lubricity is a, is a, is a lot better than like petro, petro diesel. But, uh, in saying that, it's a very good solvent. So if you just start using it, you may find that the fuel cleans out into the old petro diesel scum that might be on the bottom of your tank and you may just have to change your fuel filters for a couple of times and then it comes right after that. Well, I'm Paul Sheffield and we make dairy feed. Uh, we use biodiesel in the trucks and biodiesel in, the, in our boiler, steam boiler. Financially it's cheaper. 20% blend. Everyone's looking to cut costs. 
vehicle, the cost needs to stay down and just the availability as long as it's easy, readily available. How do you guys feel about wanting to do good for the, for the planet and good for the environment and so forth? Oh, you got it. That, that's good. It comes, comes with the territory of using biodiesel, doesn't it? I've met quite a few people that actually make their own. They find it's probably a little bit of hit and miss, but with the process, but they, they enjoy um, getting their fingers oily just to do it, you know? And it gives them a, gives them a real buzz that they're um, actually doing something for themselves. And I don't know, maybe it's just that Kiwi thing of they might be thick that they're ripping off the fuel companies by doing it, you know? <laughs> There's nothing like making your own fuel. You hungry? Some chicken wing? <laughs> yeah, this entire structure is actually built out of recycled steel. Uh, we picked it up from the, uh, the old uh, industrial facility out in Avondale, brought it to site, cut it up, and uh, welded it together. And, you know, she's not pretty, but she's functional. And uh, that's one of our mantras, I guess. Yeah, I mean, a lot of stuff we used here is all recycled hand-me-down type equipment and we've spent good money where we've needed to do and most of that's gone into the uh, intrinsically safe uh, instrumentation and PLC controls and what have you, you know. But uh, most of the tanks are all second-hand second -hand gear. Well, we designed this facility without a uh, freshwater connection, so if you want a cup of coffee, you grab your jerry can and go to the, the tap across the way to, to make the cup of coffee. We've, um, behind the sheds here, we have uh, two 10,000 litre uh, rainwater tanks and uh, we use that water for, firstly for um, fire abatement equipment and safety showers in, within the facility. But the reality is that you are dealing with uh, fats and oils and it's, it's a messy business. The stuff gets everywhere and we don't have a big tradeway sewer where we can just wash the stuff down. We work in a totally bunded area and anything that falls on the floor due to some misadventure or hose break-in, which is the reality in the industrial scene, we collect it up and we recycle it back into boiler fuel so nothing goes to waste. It's probably due to my uh, Scottish heritage that I throw nothing away. Yeah, this is uh, effectively floor sweepings that we put into our burner system. It provides the process heat so nothing goes to waste, you know. It's a multi-fuel burner running off compressed air, but it provides uh, all our uh, process heating needs, you know. So this is a second-hand uh, boiler unit that I got from an old dry cleaners in Kartaya. Bought it for a thousand dollars, got this off trade me, you know, and put it all together, you know. This is this what you thought environmentalism would be like? Well, yes, because uh, I mean, it's far better for us to process it in a controlled way than for this kind of stuff to go to landfall. Because there it seemingly uh, appears to be uh, benign, but beneath the surface it's seeping into your waterways and polluting. These terrors controlled and managed. If you look at any, well, any OECD country, I mean, even the likes of the Philippines or Indonesia, what have you, the first requirement to create a flourishing local biofuels industry is an enabling government policy and framework which uh, sets the tone for the industry because the reality is that as it stands biofuels are not competitive directly with uh, fossil fuels. Uh, oil is too cheap to enable that to happen. So there's either a mandate or some kind of government incentive to enable the industry. I mean the United States is a case in point where they've established a huge bioethanol industry out of corn. Now, I mean, that in its own right, you, one can debate that food for fuel and all that. But the reality is it's created, the, provided the US with a, a certain degree of fuel security, it's created green collar jobs um, and created a whole lot of peripheral industries. New Zealand has the resources. What is lacking is a true political will to, um, to make that difference, uh, which is sad, you know. Um, particularly if you look at uh, across the ditch in Australia, they, Initially, the biofuel industry there was screwed.
screwed around due to changing government policy, but it looks like they're back on track now with some longer term commitments. And there's no ways we can attract investment into this business with the uh, short term nature of the, of the current biodiesel grant. We've been trying oh, you know, for well over a year to try and seek that investment and uh, the common feedback amongst investors is that look it's too risky you know, because the government grants are only going to be here for a, for a year um, and it's become a highly politi politicised um, scheme so to speak and needs a, needs a non-partisan solution to say this is what we're going to do as New Zealanders, yeah we're going to embrace bioenergy and, and make it part of our future. Environmentalism, in my opinion, is uh, an appreciation and respect for, for Mother Nature. And if you respect Mother Nature, you don't do anything to hurt her. I think we, my, my view is that I, I believe that we do constructive things um, in terms of limiting the impact on the environment through A, the, the product we produce has its own inherent benefits. But moreover, we um, do utilise materials that would otherwise go to landfills. And for me, that, that's a big thing. Um, that it's a whole notion of being able to recycle, reuse. The interesting thing about, a, you know, besides all the green bun bunny hugger stuff regarding Kyoto protocols and what have you, the fundamental fact is that by burning a biofuel in, in, a, in a diesel engine, you reduce the local environmental emissions because you have far less smoke and soot. Your particulates emissions drop by about 80 percent, you don't have any sulfur and it burns real real clean um, and gives you a far better lubricity to your engine particularly with uh, in comparison to ultra low sulfur diesel. How to save the world? All you got to do is, is take the view that you're only like a custodian of it until your kids take over and you teach them right and they're going to do the same thing for their kids.